My name is Paul DeBevick and I am the uh, Chief Visual Officer for the University of Southern California's Institute for Creative Technologies. And we have been around since 1999 developing the next generation of virtual reality with a particular mandate to collaborate with the entertainment industry. So our laboratory does a mix of basic research and applied research and collaborations with uh, industry, other academic institutions, groups within our own institute. And maintaining the right mix for all of this has really been key to us being able to uh, get some good basic results that could become a great new technique maybe five years from now, but we're understanding you know, what the possibilities are to getting to take something that's a little bit more of a mature technology or ready to try out in the real world. It's still an experimental process. And to do that in collaboration with folks who are making a movie or who are making a video game. And being active in both of these areas at the same time has been really key for us. Because if we only did basic research and never tried to apply anything, we wouldn't get exposed to the real problems that people have in the real world. And it wouldn't help guide our thinking into the areas where this is an unsolved area and we might just rediscover stuff that we didn't know about that was going on in industry. And if we didn't stay um, somewhat speculative and just try something, okay, this is probably a bad idea, uh, or it might be, or it might be really great, uh, we couldn't come up with the new things. I know that there was a, a SIGGRAPH talk that I gave in 2002, and I was told afterwards that uh, John Knoll had been attending it. And I thought, oh my god, that's so great. I, John Knoll went to my talk, wow. And then I was told, yeah, and he just kind of threw up his hands and said, yeah, who needs it? <laughs> um, well, the same technique that we were presenting back then actually has now just gotten used in a big way in a couple of movies. And um, it just needed that time to mature, have other technologies catch up, and it's ready to go. We first heard about Gravity in early 2010, and some people who were working for Warner Brothers uh, that, that I knew in the effects industry uh, were interested to figure out how they could accomplish some of these shots. And at the time, uh, you know, it was still being thought of as almost like an art house film, kind of a small, interesting thing, and you know, very interesting that Alfonso Cuarón is going to do a space movie. It's going to be a, kind of a smaller thing, but there's a couple of hard visual effects sequences to pull off. For example, the protagonist, who at the time was going to be Angelina Jolie, they thought, would have to float through the International Space Station, and then she'd have to appear in a, in a space helmet. They were really concerned about how to get her to float through the ISS. And they already knew or decided that was going to be a virtual set. And so you have this classic problem of how do you take a real actor who's on probably some kind of green screen or they're in a studio and make them look like they're in a virtual set. And of course, even worse, here it has to look like it's happening in zero gravity. So they instantly thought that, okay, maybe the light stage technologies could play a role in getting the lighting right on the actor's face in order to make it look like you know, she's actually floating through. And if she goes by a light source here, you'd see that illumination. There's a lot of bounce light in this enclosed space as well, and you have to simulate that too. And it has to look real. And these are going to be long, kind of drawn out shots where you do have enough time to adjust to everything that you're seeing. And if it doesn't hold together, you'll have time to notice that. And that would be terrible. So we actually went to all of the different light stages that we had available. We looked at light stage three with has colored LEDs all around people. We looked at the facial scanning systems. If there was going to be an idea to, like we'd done for the Digital Emily project, create a CG version of the face that you can animate with performance capture. Maybe that would look good enough for that. Um, and uh, the interest really went to our big light stage six device, which is 26 feet wide. It has about 6,000 LEDs all around. And that was clearly going to be big enough to suspend somebody on a wire rig inside and then try to play lighting back on them. The problem was that light stage six only has white LEDs. It doesn't have the ability to produce color. And the um, thought was that, well, maybe the light in the ISS isn't all that colorful and we can get away with black and white light. Um, I thought that probably we're going to want to have some control over the color tone. And there is a way you can use white LEDs in order to create coloration, which is that if you take three images very uh, close together, of the actor lit by the red channel of your lighting environment, then the green channel, and then the blue channel, you can put that together into a composite image that shows it as if the actor is lit by color illumination. But at that point, you have to shoot at several times your actual frame rate, do some motion compensation to line those all up together. And once you start doing that, you can actually start thinking about, well, let's film the actor in a way where we can actually 
put them into any kind of lighting in the post-production process. And that's another line of work that we've done with the light stages where we will put high-speed cameras on people and we'll rapidly go from you know, light from the right, light from the left, from the front, from the top, maybe even 30 lighting conditions. And then afterwards, we have all these lighting passes on people and we can recombine it after the fact to make it look like they were lit by any kind of animated lighting. So the uh, idea that we came up with for this test that we did at the end of March in 2010 was to put the actor in a light stage. And we actually ended up using uh, the white light light stage that's in Burbank for Light Stage LLC. Tim Hawkins and Clay Sparks helped set up this uh, test over there. And we uh, had uh, Alfonso Cuaron come and actually direct a test actress in the stage. Uh, Tim Weber and Chris Lawrence from Framestore came as well. And we rapidly changed the lighting on this actor through 11 lighting conditions. And these were blurry gradients of light coming from all the principal directions. And then a couple of literal lighting reproduction patterns where they were lit from as if the light from the earth from here, and then from here, and then from here. And our idea was if we can use these basis lighting conditions with the gradients to figure out surface normals, to figure out 3D geometry, to do a rough diffuse specular separation in a technique that Graham Fife, who did a lot of the 3D reconstruction for this project, came up with, that we should be able to relight this actor's performance per frame and also view it from any angle after the fact and have it match just as realistically to these literal lighting reproduction patterns that we were putting on there. And the test went pretty well. The cameras were a little cranky to deal with because we were going to these new Cinemag cartridges that um, had a little bit of trouble and, you know, every so often one of them, oops, we got to do that again. Um, but we got a very nice take and we processed the data and this actually got published as a paper at Eurographics 2011 called Comprehensive Facial Performance Capture. And it looked like this was going to be a pretty cool technique to try to use as long as it was going to be okay for a couple of key visual effect shots. And then as the development went further, they realized, you know what, we're going to want to do almost the entire movie as this kind of visual effect shot. And at that point, as much as they wanted to use the technique, and Framestore was getting some nice renderings of these relit um, object files and um, reflectance maps, it wasn't going to be practical to do half the movie this way with multiple high-speed cameras running for all of these takes. And so the main technique is much closer to what we'd done in our SIGGRAPH 2002 paper, which we called Light Stage 3, where we literally surround the actor with color LEDs that play back the illumination. You know, you have to know what the lighting is beforehand, but you can put any colors around and animate it and get the light to match into the light of the virtual environment. But in addition, they did bring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney over to Light Stage LLC's Light Stage and digitize their faces at very high resolution to become digit doubles. And the digit doubles that were done by Framestore, which actually look very nice, uh, were used for a number of shots to help blend between the live action footage done in the lighting reproduction LED system, uh, and then they can go to a CG character lit by image-based lighting effectively, and then back. And there's even one where there's almost full screen where they uh, saw a digital double.